cell the unit of life so we have uh, we know that biology is the branch of science which deals with the study of living beings now there are so many living beings all around isn't it some are unicellular very small you can't see with your bare eyes and some are yeah, a little bigger than that some are huge in size so there are many types of living beings around there are plants there are little insects, birds, okay. So now every living being that we see around us is made up of a basic structure. The basic, the unit of the structure and the unit of their function is called cell. They are just like building blocks. You must have played in your junior classes, you know, yellow, blue, green. And you fix each of them together and you can make a house or a bridge. Okay, you can make many things using those blocks. So similarly, cells are just like building blocks with which these various kinds of living beings are made up of. So cell is the structural and functional unit of all living beings. It gives structure. And each and every function that is occurring inside a living being is actually taking place in the cell. Suppose we talk about uh, animals. So the digestion, the respiration, everything is actually taking place inside the cell. If you talk about plants, photosynthesis, that is also taking place inside a cell. Fine. So the functions are also occurring in a cell. Now, it is the smallest part of any living body which can exist on its own so we have you know um, organisms very um, primitive organisms lower organisms which are made up of only one cell they are unicellular okay so they can exist independently a cell so they also do all the basic metabolisms or uh, activities that require it to be called a living being but everything happens in a single cell there and in multicellular organisms there are millions billions trillions of cells in it now these cells are very very minute very small so how did we come about discovering it how did we come to know about it it is because of some great scientists a Dutch scientist called Anthony van Leeuwenhoek was the first one to see these cells in magnified form in underwater. Okay, so he used a simple microscope which he had discovered. A simple microscope that he discovered had a biconvex lens. It had a biconvex lens with the help of which he could magnify things say around 200 times. Okay, so it was very simple. A flat plate was there, the lens was fixed. Under the lens there was a pin on which he used to keep the object. The pin could be controlled with the screw and he could magnify to a limited uh, you know range but he was the first one to see these cells under water next another scientist whose contribution we cannot forget in this matter is robert hook he was the one who discovered a compound microscope so in a compound microscope, what was the difference? He used two lenses, but because of which he could magnify things 200 times. Okay, so the microscope that we use in our labs, they are actually, you know, a modern version of that compound microscope. So he, what he saw, he took a piece of cork, a section of it, and saw it under that microscope. And he could see some hexagonal boxes like honeycomb under it, okay, in the microscope, under the microscope. 
and he was the one who named these boxes as cells because he felt those boxes were similar to the small rooms in a monastery where the monks stay okay so therefore he named those hexagonal boxes as cells so he was the one who gave these uh, structures their name that is called that we still till date call it cell okay now going for the microscope the compound microscope that we he was he discovered and based on which we still use in the labs to magnify things and see and if we need to see something more magnified to for more perfection then a better version of the compound microscope that is called electron microscope is used okay so in electron microscope the electrons are controlled and the magnification may be too lack times so it's a huge magnification so but in our day to day labs a compound microscope is enough so first we'll study the parts of the compound microscope now this is an ordinary compound microscope so this is the eyepiece through which we see the magnified object this is the you know the body tube fine this circular ring that is this is the nose piece which has lenses one is high objective power lens another is a low power objective lens okay then we have the stage in this there are clips we keep the slide the object on the slide and we place the slide underneath it adjust the adjust the power of the lens how much magnification we want and then we can coarsely adjust the length you know the distance the focus of this body tube with the help of this uh, part that you see okay this is for for coarse adjustment and fine very small adjustment if you want to do we do it with by moving this okay so then comes the uh, stand the base and this is the light so the light light falls on this and gives there is a small hole here through which the light reflects on that falls on the object that you're placing uh, here okay and the lens magnifies and we see through the eyepiece so this is just an ordinary compound microscope that we use in the labs okay you might have seen it in the clinical pathological labs also now once the cell was discovered so lot of you know things could be understood and uh, the study went on further so there were the there was this german biologist sclidon okay now what did he observe he observed that plants all plants are made up of cells so he found that the structural and functional unit of plants are actually cells later on a zoologist a botanist is a person who studies about plants and a zoologist is a person who studies about animals okay under biology so here a uh, again a german zoologist uh, sclidon he declared he saw that even animals were made up of cells even the animals structural and functional unit were cells so he declared that the structural and functional unit of both plants as well as animals are actually cells later on a year later he verchau another german biologist he added to this conclusion that the new cells that form in a living being is actually formed from pre existing cells that is the old cells divide to give rise to new cells so
so this whole theory was named as cell theory saying cell is the structural unit of life Str cell is the functional unit of life and all uh, new cells exist are uh, arise from pre existing cells okay now coming to the number of cells so as i told you some are organisms are made up of just single one cell some are made up of some few cells and there are other organisms which are made up of many many cells so like for single cell organisms your bacteria for few cells your spirogyra and multicellular organisms there are so many around you fine now cells are very very small and microscopic as i said but how small is there any variations in their size yes there are so the smallest cell is actually bacteria and the smallest cell in the human body is the rbcs red blood corpuscles the longest cell is the nerve cell can you imagine the length of the nerve cell right from your fingertip to your backbone got it the largest cell is actually the egg cell um, the yellow of the egg um, actually the white part adds on to the egg later on fine and among it also the ostrich's egg cell is the largest cell before it starts and the embryo uh, before it starts multiplying fine now coming to uh, now how does the smallness of the cell help the cell okay as it is small it can the parts of the cell can very easily communicate with each other or you know if they have to pass on something some substances they can pass on very easily and as they are very small so it can be accommodated a large surface area it can cover okay so they're in increasing the surface area and therefore any function that needs to be done can be done with lot of effectiveness okay now coming to the the shapes the shape of the cell also is very important because the shape and size both of the cell depends on what function it needs to perform so we have different shapes of cell we have you know disc shaped cell uh, red blood cells which do not have nucleus we have uh, rectangular cells as leaf cells we have oval shaped cells as chlamydomonas okay you have slipper shaped cell as paramecium we have spindle shaped tapering shaped cells as of muscle cells so there are various shapes also of cells it depends on what function it needs to perform